Hi, welcome to Pictures, Noise and Words. I'm Hedgy, and this is Charles Murphy. Here Hello. he is. Hello. Hey. So Charles has very uh, nicely agreed to join me for a week. Um, not literally. We're not moving in together or anything. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, sorry. Did, did, I forgot to break that to you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's actually literally on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean from me um, and five hours behind me. Wait till you see what happens in two hours. You're going to be amazed because um, I live in the future as far as he's concerned. So, yes, got, anyway, all of that nonsense aside. Charles Give me the lottery here. numbers, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll just look them up, the American lottery. And why didn't I think of that? So Charles is here. Charles is Chosen this song, The Agonist, uh, the band in Vertigo, the song from the album Orphans. Um, out last year, I think, was it? It's about a year old, I think. I don't know. I, I ran into this from a YouTube's Recommends uh, maybe four months ago. So I don't know how long the album was out before that. I know nothing about the band. Um, I just know that I loved this song and immediately bought the album. Uh, and the album, the whole album has been fantastic. So YouTube algorithms, yay. Okay. And the YouTube algorithm does get things right every now and again. Um, but you've bigged this up now. I haven't heard this song. I am aware of The Agonist uh, as a band, but it's not a band I've ever really listened to. They're from Canada, and it's the band that Alyssa Whitelutz came from before she went to Arch Enemy. Um, but obviously she's gone now, so this is somebody else. I don't know the name of the person who's in the band now. I already forgot. Okay. <laughs> so I, I looked her up. I, I checked out some other videos. They were fantastic. I knew her name and pew, pew, right out. Right. Yeah, this is not a band. It's a band I'm familiar with, as in I'm familiar with their name, but I am not familiar with their songs. I've never listened to an album, and I, I haven't heard this song. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a, a surprise. I think but... you're going to like the drumming. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, for people out there, um, Charles can't see my screen, so he can't see or hear what I'm, so I'm going to have to count him in. He's going to watch it separately himself. So, um, I can't talk about it. I haven't seen it, so let's get on with it. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready, people at home? Are you ready? <laughs> okay, I'll just count you in then. Three, two, one, click.
Hang on. I thought Canadians were happy people. <laughs> um, Maybe she just moved there and was getting out her aggression. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. You have to get rid of all that. Gonna move in. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's totally brutal, isn't it? And that, yes. that sludge voice she does at the, at, you know, in the last quarter. <laughs> Just That's like, right. well, hang on a minute. Where's that come from? <laughs> um, Let me reach down for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that's really, that's, it's really good, impressive, brutal driving song, isn't it? But I really wish I'd been in the writing um, room when someone said, I've got an idea. Let's go la 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 in it. No one will see that coming because it's just such it's so it's so at odds with the rest of it, but it fits so well, doesn't it? You know, just la 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 la. So uh, and that reminds me of where I saw this recommendation. It was right after watching Death God Apocalypse. All right, Flesh God Apocalypse. A Flesh God Apocalypse. See, I am so bad at these names. That's it was problem. right after watching Flesh God Apocalypse. And it said, oh, you like symphonic sounds? You like brutal metal? Yes. I can see that they definitely do go together. Um, I mean, Flesh God Apocalypse is just... It's a genius mashing together of things, isn't it? So, yeah. But yeah, this is... Um, I, I always try my best not to focus on the person at the front because <laughs> uh, right, that's what right. everybody does. Um, but you can't ignore the obviously her voice, which she, you know she seems to be able to go up there, over there, nice and soft, totally you know deep, brutal sound. Right. Um, it's a shame I think that there are going to be comparisons to Arch Enemy just because of. Uh, you know, the right. sharing a singer for not didn't share them, but you know, what I mean, they had the same singer at one point. Because uh, I've seen that, I've seen literally underneath this video on uh, YouTube, the f first comment is somebody talking about our enemy and then say, oh. you know, <laughs> kind of thing, um, which is it's kind of one of those almost unavoidable things because right. Right. to me, at going off one song, they don't sound the same. Um, but I probably I'm not going to get into it. Um, but to me, they don't sound the same. I think there is definitely a difference. So, but yes, um, top. Well, song. I like I I like the fact that you know, and you mentioned this in the Vintage Seed video that we've moved past the stage of oh my God, women doing metal metal singing. You now we we've, we've moved past that. Well, we grown ups uh, have. <laughs> well, we grown ups have. <laughs> yes. uh, if I the first time I watched this, I did not feel like going. Ah! <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a song that this made me do that. To be honest, uh, but, uh, I mean, uh, speaking of Flesh God Apocalypse, I I heard, heard their song "The Violation" was the first thing I heard by them, and I must admit that did make me go, "Oh my good grief!" You know. Yeah, yeah, I, I gawked at that one a bit. Kind of thing. But yeah, I didn't fall off my chair with my hair on fire. It, it, it just went somewhere else. Um, uh, yeah, well, we know my opinion on on those uh, on those channels. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, I mean, this is, excellent this is several, stuff. several bands now where I have an album of female metal singers, and it wasn't the fact that it was a female metal singer that drove me to buy the album whatsoever. No, you it have was, to judge it on. All right. the things that you would judge any band on. That's right. what that's what equality is, isn't it? It's it's about it's not about do they look good in a pair of ripped jeans and and and, and you know, it's not all about one person. So this guitarist, you know, clearly knows exactly what he's doing. Oh my god. Drummer is this powerhouse drummer and you know and, and you know, it is a band and yes. that's which is exactly I, what I, I said. was I was very impressed by the talent of the band. The drummer, now, I, I, you know, he wasn't playing anything overly complex, but like you said, what a machine. Hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, the beats he was putting out. And, you know, it, when I see a guitarist like that, and I, I think back to 
when I first started playing uh, in the 70s, um, you know, when I see them doing those kinds of riffs, I think, you know, these these guys who are kind of taken for granted now would have been guitar gods back in the day. <laughs> I, part of it, I mean, I might be completely wrong here, um, but they were always very good guitar players. I think production has moved on so far and that is not just production, but like the recording process and everything that goes into it has moved on so much just in 30 or the last 20 years or whatever times, probably even in the last 10, it's moved quite a long way. Right. You can produce amazing stuff out of your back bedroom now. Right, um, right. That I think there was probably a lot of talented people and you just couldn't necessarily hear everything that was going on in the past and all of that sort of thing. And I think it's now easier from a recording processing point of view to pick out the, the clever stuff. So you're right, there is... Because I, you know, we used to be musicians. Well, you might still be a musician, sorry. But, um, nope. <laughs> nope. but you know, we used, to, we used to be musicians and we know that musicians are ten a penny. Um, yeah. You know, that, that there is nobody that's irreplaceable when it comes to being a musician. So there's a ton of talent out there. And I, and I think we've just hit a really good sweet spot of production and, and recording skills right. and process and technology that you can now isolate every note you know and yeah. all of that sort of thing we're not recording it onto tape and then mixing it right. together oh, God, <laughs> you know right. and, and well and even the sounds that come out you know your 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 old tube amp that was kind of squeaky and you could get some you know distortion out of it if you up the gain versus now you play directly into your computer absolutely uh, yeah, and you can have virtual amps and everything. Right. Um, you know, all of that sort of thing. I mean, if I wanted my drums to sound different, I'd have to throw another blanket in it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but now you just record whatever comes out and you make it into what you want it to be. Right, right. And, well, this, and, I, and I think there's different which expectations. Which is not a terrible thing. Too. Yeah. But I, I, I think there's different expectations, too. You're, when, now, if you're learning guitar, uh, They'll tell you if you're going to be a professional, you're going to have to play sweeping arpeggios uh, at blistering speed versus back in the day. It's like, you know, I can play a couple of riffs and, and hit the right key. Uh, you were good to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it and I've said this when you watch uh, like a yet another Japanese band where everyone just seems to be this virtuoso musician, you think where are all these people coming from? And I think, <laughs> but I think we get the really shiny stuff from Japan. I think the stuff that has been polished up and westernized and, and, and is like, it's like your showcase stuff, I think mm -hmm. is, is what gets, not just, I don't mean released by Japan into the world, but the things that the, that we in the West pick up. And I think that's all, it's all the same sort of thing the, the the industry and the technology and the and the, the skill level and everything has has come together um, right. to make it easier to produce better sounding stuff. That doesn't mean for a second that you don't have to be good at what you do. <laughs> I think there's right. just a lot of people who are good at what they do, and now you can hear more of them. You know, yeah, you can hear every note they play. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and also you can hear the top ten percent now easily right whereas in yeah. 1980 you heard the top one percent because you had to go and buy the record <laughs> and you had and you had to be lucky enough to see a video that they'd made on some tv program you know oh you couldn't right. just look up everything you wanted whenever you wanted so that's right i think yeah i think we're just living in these great time when everything you want is at, at the end of your fingers kind of thing um, yeah I'm not sure. And, and, I'm not sure how we and, got here. <laughs> yeah, well, right. <laughs> and 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 another thing that you know you introduced me to Flesh God Apocalypse, mm. um, and you know that and this song and others have really pointed out how well the if they're layered correctly, how well the metal sound goes with the symphonic sound. Oh yes. Uh, you know you don't you don't have to have a forty piece orchestra involved. It just you know take maybe a few strings or something. And use them properly. Boy, they blend. Yeah, they blend beautifully. 
if Paz was here, he'd be like, oh, I know what's coming next. Um, because <laughs> I always say, my, in my humble opinion, you can mix. You can mix anything into metal. Metal can absorb yes, anything, true. even rap. I'm not necessarily yes. I'm not a big fan of rap metal, but you can do it. And you can put <laughs> opera, as we see, you know, and you can put right. the, all the symphonic stuff. You can do anything. You can mix it into metal. It is just one of those genres that can sort of subsume anything that's, that's put near it. You know, jazz. You, you hear jazz in technical metal all of the time. I have. Yeah. I have. Anything. There's a, there's a band called uh, Diablo Swing Orchestra. Oh, yes. I know Diablo Swing Orchestra. My beautiful blending there of swing and jazz and metal. Mm -hmm. But even all the folk metal bands who are, in, who are bringing. There's a real. Sorry, everyone. Can you hear a really <laughs> weird noise? I can hear a really weird noise coming in. That, that might have been a big truck going by me. Right. Okay. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> it just went right through my ears then. Um, I forgot where I was going. Yes, so you get all the traditional instruments put in by folk metal bands, and somehow it can you can make a lute work with with, with metal, you know. So uh, or a hurdy gurdy. Yeah, and it's and I always kind of feel sorry for all of those people who are not into metal who just think it, metal is one thing. It's just right, oh, right. dum dum. How many how many times have people said to you, oh, metal, dum 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 dum. Oh, that 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 series you did with your friend was brilliant. Oh, the uh, introducing. All genres. the genres of metal. That was brilliant. Yeah, and I only did six. There's only another 10,000 to go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, this has been a long one, hasn't it, everybody? Sorry about that. Um, and we went right off into the weeds. Uh, sorry, the agonist, if you happen to see this. We stopped talking about you long ago. Um, they were at the core. Yeah, oh, they were at the core. No pun intended. Um, so... Excellent stuff, very well produced, you know, clear as a bell, but still had all of the heavy brutality to it. A lady with a, a voice that seems to go wherever she wants it to, uh, but can really, you know, it's about feeling, isn't it? And it's all there. You can, f the feeling is there in her voice and everything. Because the one thing um, that, I, that I kind of pick up on sometimes is that, and this is a thing about, more about, Oh, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. This is more about lady death metal singers than male ones, I think. Is that they can be a bit monotone. That I'm not going to name a name, but there is a pretty famous death metal lady singer who's quite popular. And in my humble opinion, when she does the death metal voice, she has one tone. And yes, it is a growly tone, but it does. It, there's no... There's no melody to it at all, mm -hmm. um, which is not a problem here. This is fine. This is this is this is a really I, good I, voice. I picked up distinct melody, and I even understood some of the words. Yeah. So, but you can. I guess if people perhaps sing outside of their comfort zone, they lose the melody because they're they're just trying to achieve the the, the sound kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but this is great. Like I say, productions fab song drives along and uh, i really i really liked it so uh yeah good good pick good pick charles <laughs> thank you glad you liked it okay then so before this goes on for an hour and a half um <laughs> let me know what you think everybody as usual i think the agonist probably has quite a big fan base um so i'm no doubt said something you don't like along the way let me know good or bad and I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.